Hey, this is San uh, with Dry Face Consulting here. Uh, just got back from BubbleCon, so this was the second annual BubbleCon uh, conference, and really glad I went. I uh, wanted to share a couple of the key takeaways I got from BubbleCon that I think are super exciting. Um, so just kind of high level, I uh, wanted to share Number one, uh, the big announcement that they made was the native mobile app builder. Um, so it's technically an alpha, but it's going to beta right now. Uh, and as a silver agency with uh, Dry Face Consulting, and also because I attended the conference, I should get uh, beta access within the next 30 days. Once I do, I'll probably do a whole another video dedicated to that, uh, my experience with that. The other thing that they announced, which I think was available prior to BubbleCon, but I didn't actually try it until uh, they announced it at BubbleCon, was the AI page builder. Um, so that's pretty cool. I think that's going to speed up development even further, you know, in addition to some of the other advantages of no code. Um, another big one was Flusk. Uh, so Bubble acquired Flusk. Uh, someone had mentioned it to me in the past. I looked at it real briefly, but I'm actually taking a deeper dive on it. So Flusk is a security you know, monitoring and audit program that's built specifically for bubble apps. Um, and so uh, really interested in that to kind of test that out a little bit. As an agency, we actually get a free account um, and I'm gonna try that a little bit deeper as well. The workflow editor updates, um, excited about that. Uh, as it is right now, it's not necessarily that exciting, but some of the features that they're rolling out. So they're rolling out in uh, phases. And so some of the later phases uh, I'm really excited about. So I'm gonna chat about that a little bit. And then one of the other things that I was really interested in coming out of BubbleCon was a case study that someone had presented where uh, Seagate, which is a huge hard drive manufacturing company, shared how they uh, saved a ton of time and money by moving uh, basically the whole division from kind of traditional code to bubble. So wanted to kind of share that. And then just kind of share my final thoughts on, you know, some of the things where I'm just excited about the direction that bubble is taking. You know, I know there is an increased amount of competition from other no code tools that are launching. So I think bubble's making some really good moves. Wanted to kind of share, um, you know, my final thoughts on, on how I'm I'm definitely excited and optimistic about the direction that Bubble's taking over the next couple, you know, months and years. As I mentioned, probably the biggest announcement they made at BubbleCon was the launch of their native mobile app builder. So for those that are building in Bubble right now, we've certainly been able to build native apps uh, using either the two that uh, are my team and I have always used are either BDK, which is a plugin and a wrapping service or uh, build natively. Uh, we've been recently using build natively uh, just because there's some features that are available in build natively that weren't available through BDK. Uh, we've also had some issues getting in touch with the BDK support team. Um, but so the big things here, and again, like most of these new features are gonna be rolling out in phases, but you know, number one, you know, you won't have to need, use a third party plugin anymore or wrapping service. Um, they did say this will eventually be an extra cost. Um, so right now during beta, it won't be. Um, but, you know, one of the big things is uh, the builder is actually going to be creating React Native code um, that will be uploaded into the app stores. So and then along those lines, you know, in the past when we used the uh, wrapping service, basically we'd have to send to the wrapping service, they would wrap it and then through their uh, platform, we then would be uploading those files to the Android and Apple um, stores um, versus now you'll be able to publish the app directly to the app stores from Bubble, which will be nice. And then, you know, to access a lot of the native features, you won't have to use an ex, you know, extra plugin. So with that, what I'm going to do is actually just share the trailer video. One platform, infinite possibilities. Bring your mobile app ideas to life with Bubble. Bubble empowers you to launch apps that share data and logic across web and mobile. Let's show you how it works. 
From the Bubble Editor, you can design a native mobile experience with seamless interactions and intuitive gestures. Easily integrate with device functionality like camera access and push notifications. Preview in the editor or test on your device with Bubble Go. Ready to launch? Publish directly to the app stores. With help from React Native, Bubble apps are instantly compatible with iOS and Android. Oh hey, look at that. The future of app development is at your fingertips. Build it with Bubble. So as you can see, some cool things happening with this uh, native mobile app builder. I mean, two, two other things I wanted to mention as I was watching that video. Um, number one, you know, some features like swiping gestures and things like that. Um, I don't I don't remember those being available in some of the wrapping service and the plugins that we've used. Um, the other thing that they mentioned was those um, the menus. Uh, there'll be some native uh, menu options, uh, top bars, bottom bars. Um, and that'll be really easy to set up so you won't have to kind of do a lot of the workflows in the back end. It'll just kind of, uh, some of that will be set up in the back end of Bubble. So that'll save a lot of time as well. So sometimes it's, it's very tedious to kind of set up all these different screens. That's gonna happen in uh, you know the native app builder. So with that, let's talk about the AI um, page builder. So as I mentioned, uh, the AI page builder, I've seen this before, I just haven't used it. Um, I didn't use it until I saw it at BubbleCon. Um, but basically it's a way to kind of build out um, Bubble pages really quickly with some of the basic content and workflows for it. So um, real quick, so you've got um, in the page, you can go add new page with AI. And so um, you've got, uh, looks like eight different options right now, landing page, dashboard, social feed, marketplace, user profile, product listing, settings, sign in. So, uh, you know, just purposes of demonstration, I'm going to um, pick a social feed and make the page smaller and hit next. Um, and so a live social feed, for for people that like to play pickleball, and let's just generate that with AI. So that takes a few minutes. Let me. I'll go ahead and pause this while it's generating, and I'll come back and show you the end results. Uh, it's pretty cool. Okay, so we're back. Uh, that took about maybe five minutes. Um, as you can see here, uh, the AI created um, a page uh, based on my prompt. Um, what it did not do is it did not create any data table specifically to, for that. Um, and it did create some of the workflows, but not all of them. Um, you know, um, so if we preview this, um, we'll be able to see. Um, so if you hover, you can see that the elements have some conditionals on it, but uh, they're not clickable. Um, you know, adding a video or files, that's not there. Um, and I could type some stuff, but there's, I can't add that post, right? Um, but one of some of the things that is here um, are these icons, laying out the icons and the repeating groups uh, and the buttons and, and all these elements are here. Um, there's no, as you can see, there's no d dynamic data, which makes sense because no tables were created. Uh, but that, you know, so there's limited functionality, but it certainly saves a lot of time of laying this out, laying the repeating groups out. Um, you'd have to probably go back and, and redo this branding, things like that. But it certainly does save quite a bit of time uh, for you. But um, so, yeah, so it's a, it's a great feature. I mean, this is the first iteration of it. It's still in beta. Um, so I think I'm sure... There's more to come. Uh, AI has, has evolved so quickly, so it's a it's a nice feature that saves time. Um, but you know, don't don't think that you, you don't have any work to do <laughs> anymore. I mean, there's cer certainly still a lot to do. Uh, which, which, in some sense, if you're a bubble developer, is is good because we still have jobs for now. Um, but uh, again, uh, it's, uh, you know, kind of wanted to show you what it is and what it isn't. So one of the other uh, announcements Bubble made was they acquired a company called Flusk. And if you're not familiar, uh, Flusk is a company that built a security solution specifically for Bubble apps. So it looks like they kind of do two main things as far as I can tell. I'm still um, 
Uh, they offer a free agency account, so I'm working on getting one set up. Uh, but um, so basically, they'll do a security audit on a bubble app. So I think typically what you do is just share the uh, app name, app ID, or um, link, and then you can add uh, an email as a collaborator. And basically, they'll run through and kind of do an audit based on a number of areas. So privacy rules, uh, public sensitive fields, database leaks, uh, page access protection, uh, are your bubble API tokens set up correctly, um, API connector. Um, so a bunch of other uh, things that they're really looking at that to, to double check the security of the app, which is, you know, we all could use more security. Honestly, so and then the other thing that they'll do is they'll do um, security monitoring for a specific uh, bubble app. Uh, what they said is that it won't kind of affect performance in any way. Um, and so, you know, I'm sure Bubble did their due diligence before they acquired them. But again, uh, Bubble did just acquire them. So I'm sure you'll be able to get this uh, service directly through Bubble going forward. So pretty cool. Um, if you haven't, if you aren't familiar with Flux, definitely check them out. So one of the next uh, big announcement that's Bubble did at the uh, BubbleCon was the update to the workflow editor. Um, and I got to warn you, uh, this is the first release. Uh, it's still in beta, and I think anyone can opt into the to the uh, beta testing. Um, they're releasing it in phases. So this initial release, uh, I've already seen some some comments on Reddit that, that Reddit that's a little disappointing. So so there are more things coming. So as you can see here, so the old interface looked more like this. So with these, you know, each one of these was a different um, workflow, and um, you know now it's vertical. Um, so other than that you know there's not a lot of other um features so i mean this looks very familiar other than it's it's a pop-up as opposed to i think these used to appear on the side um but where they're going and where they said they're going is this kind of allows them to kind of pave the way for some additional releases down the road which is um more along the lines of where they can start doing kind of um branches and loops and and so this kind of is a little bit more like uh, so i use go high level a lot and zapier um and so this editor is very much along those lines where you can kind of have different conditions and then basically um you know have branches off of those conditions um and then with the loop um it's a little bit like a recursive workflow uh, I'll be interested to see how that actually works. Uh, so I don't think Zapier or Go High Level has a, um, any kind of loop. Uh, but this kind of update to the interface will allow them to add those features. So again, as is, not that exciting. It went from vertical to, from horizontal to vertical. And then the other big thing, which is, is kind of nice, is um, kind of the organization is such that you'll be able to kind of find stuff based on the types of triggers very quickly as well as the folders will be really easy to find um the other thing is i think also is you'll be able to share uh these links um with someone that and that'll be a link to a specific workflow that you're working on and so they'll be able to kind of um kind of edit that a little bit easier as opposed to kind of them finding that particular workflow. So collaboration is going to be a little bit easier. Um, searchability and organization will be a little bit easier. But I think the big thing, which isn't here yet, is going to be the ability to kind of have branches and looping workflows, um, which I think that will be a, a big difference. I know uh, I've been using WeWeb, uh, and they have that kind of in place already with their workflow editor. So I suspect that Bubble's starting to feel pressure from some of these other competitors, and they knew, they know they need to make updates uh, quickly to to, to stay up, uh, to not be caught. I guess is probably a better better way to put it. All right. And so the next thing I'm gonna share is this enterprise case study that I really enjoyed. So I'll be right back. So the last kind of thing I want to take a deep dive on is this case study um, where someone from Seagate, if you're not familiar with Seagate, um, shared a case study. Um, so Seagate's 
pretty large company said there's 45,000 employees. Um, and so this, uh, I think it's Michael, Michael Ong, uh, was the one that presented works for Seagate works with a group. Uh, I think it's called live. Yeah. Live. I believe that's how you say it. Um, where that's basically a 100 person team within Seagate that really has the autonomy to work as if they're a startup within uh, an enterprise organization, which is pretty cool. Now, I think the other thing that's unique about this is um, Michael happened to also be a bubble developer, I think since 2013. And, um, and so what was really fascinating to me was that Michael convinced Seagate to try uh, to convert some of their uh, tech projects from kind of traditional code over to bubble. Um, and so a couple things happened. So number one is, um, one thing that he said is, you know, certainly within enterprise, which is typically risk averse, uh, what he suggested was, you know, starting off with an internal tool was something that helped, um, get Seagate comfortable with that transition, uh, because that's something that has potential for high impact, but low risk, right? So it's not customer facing. Um, and so they eventually moved over, uh, you know, it looked essentially like e-commerce, uh, type functionality over from, um, you know, their code coded solutions over to completely over to bubble. Uh, and I believe they were on the bubble enterprise, um, plan, right? So, so a uh, very scalable dedicated instance. Um, so, and things that integrated with internal systems like Salesforce and SAP and other APIs. And so here's the thing that was really eye opening, which also shouldn't be that surprising is they had, uh, an outsourced tech team that was costing $2.3 million a year. Um, and then they basically converted their internal product team to bubble developers. So their costs went from basically 2.3 million a year to, I'm going to say zero. It's not truly zero because they have to pay them, but it sounds like they would have paid them anyways. And kind of more importantly is, I think I read in here that, you know, building kind of all the tools and, and, and products that they built would have taken them over three years. Uh, and because of the move to bubble, they were able to do it in less than, uh, I think four months. Right. And so I think the big takeaway here is no code and, and bubble, um, in particular can work at an enterprise level. I think it's a little bit harder to get in, but it's still doable. Um, and I think, uh, you know, that was an eye opening, open eye opener for me, uh, owning an agency that, Hey, let's not sell ourselves short. Um, there are opportunities at the enterprise level to, to sell into it. Um, again, there's some challenges, but, uh, to it, but if you do get an enterprise, uh, account that, that could be quite a game changer if you're, particularly if you're a smaller agency, although if you're a smaller agency, it's probably harder for you to get, uh, into those larger enterprise contracts. But I, again, I think the takeaway is no code can be for enterprise too. Um, and I think that was one of my biggest takeaways for the, for the week. Um, and, and wanted to, to share with you, um, whether you're a bubbler yourself or agency owner or a founder, um, you know, I think there's been this, this, um, reputation that bubble doesn't scale. Um, and I, I think this is definitely kind of a, a case study that shows that it, that it absolutely can scale. So with that, uh, I'll be back in a second to share my final thoughts, um, but hopefully you enjoyed this. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope uh, if you did enjoy it, um, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, we'll be putting out a lot more content over the next few months, um, you know, related to no code bubble and some of the other tools, but um, just some last takeaways from you know, my time at BubbleCon. Uh, number one is there's certainly a lot of no code tools that have come out over the last couple of months, couple of years. Uh, Bubble certainly started a, a kind of era of no code, I would say. Um, but, and, and they were kind of by themselves for a little while, but I think over the last couple of years, there's definitely been a lot more competition. 
Um, and the competition definitely had caught up very quickly. Uh, but I think out of BubbleCon, I'm feeling like Bubble is realizing it. They're not kind of sitting back and, you know, relying on their reputation, but they're certainly making moves and planning for the long term. Um, and so that does make me feel comfortable with kind of a longer term partnership with Bubble. I mean, that doesn't mean that we'll only use Bubble tools, um, but it definitely makes me feel like Bubble's going to be a strong partner going forward, along with other tools. Um, but uh, I think this will be a, a good fit for us in the long term. So um, if you're, you know, looking to build something, don't necessarily have the skill set to build yourself or just want to chat with me, um, pick my brain, happy to chat with people. Um, so feel free to connect with us uh, via, you know, what that's the phone number, but that's also our tech number. Uh, you can book a free consultation or email us. Uh, and I'm ha happy to chat with you and um, help you. Um, we have a lot of expertise with both building things and just business itself. And that gives us a truly unique perspective uh, when we deal with clients as far as helping them not only build, but help them decide what to build, which a lot of clients appreciate. And, and also, we understand what you're building and why. So love to chat with you. Hope you appreciated the, uh, the video. Um, follow us, subscribe, and uh, until the next video.